any working professional as well as students dealing with computer systems whether it's in the programming side or it's in the hardware design side would find this course very useful okay so what i'll do basically is i'll start off with giving you some introduction on what computer architecture is and uh, we will also talk about the different types of computer architecture we'll also talk of the different applications of computer architecture and uh, i'll also give you some brief overview of what computer architecture mean what is computer processor okay and uh, what is microcontroller so on so forth these all things we'll talk about today uh, in a nutshell not getting into too much uh, details because those things will be covered gradually in the subsequent lectures and then of course i'll also talk you through about uh, where do we find the real life applications of these systems okay so what are the learning outcomes of this course uh, a student will have cognizance of the rudimentary essentials of a computer okay so far you all have been dealing with uh, programming mostly but now you'll actually get to see how that program gets translated into internal language that the computer can understand and how that is processed by the computer hardware uh, a student or working professional whoever wishes to understand would also get that get an idea about how these essentials interconnect with each other would also have an idea and cognizance about the dissimilar forms of memory organization so what i mean by this is that the memory organization can be of different types of memory so we'll see how those memory components that form an organization are interconnected to each other and also how they interface with the processor or computer architecture as a whole the students will also develop an comprehension about the fundamentals of logic and number depiction logic design is anyways a prerequisite of this course so you'll also have an idea about how that how that you know plays a role in this course and how the computer arithmetics can be an important segment for the computers to to function a student will grasp the various levels of programming because so far as i said you've been dealing with high level programming and you also get to low level programming uh, more at the lower levels of abstraction you'll also understand about the structure of mips processor what i mean by that is that the mips is uh, the is one of the latest variants of the architectures that are mostly used in all uh, recent computer systems so you'll also understand about the structure of mips processor from this course you'll also understand how the assembly language program for this uh, mips processor can be simulated using open source simulation tools mostly used widely in any universities uh, in india and outside india as well okay so at a high level these are the learning outcomes of this course and i'm quite sure that this course will act as a build up on for the upcoming courses that you will find in the next phase of your curriculum okay so uh, let's formally define what a computer architecture is a computer architecture is a study of computer system hardware that comprises of processor memory subsystems and its interconnection so computer system hardware when i talk of the word we actually don't want to interpret that as something which is tangible always in this course of course you are not going to make a tangible hardware but you will design the hardware uh, so that that could be converted into a tangible form later and that would comprise of the processor the one responsible for processing the data the memory responsible for storing the data subsystems that can be a peripheral device that has some linkage with the processor and memory and it also have an idea about the interconnections how those are interconnected to each other so as i said it's a very important field of study for computer engineers especially hardware developers compiler designers and operating system developers the knowledge of digital logic systems would be sufficient for understanding the computer architecture course uh and uh, i think uh, whoever has 
basic idea about that subject would be able to grasp the concept of this course quite easily. The knowledge of this course would help a designer to analyze computer hardware systems in terms of its performance parameters such as power, delay, area. So these are some of the vital parameters of a computer system. When we talk of the word power, we are actually talking of how much is the uh, how much is the dissipation of power or consumption of power okay when we talk of the word delay we are actually referring to what is the speed of the processor and area as in we are referring to the chip area that means how much area the entire processor occupies in terms of the hardware units okay so all of these we'll also have some idea through this course uh, after finishing the course, the student will become knowledgeable about the process of functioning, memory architecture and its interaction. What are the applications of computer architecture in today's world? So if you have thorough knowledge of computer architecture, it is useful for designing consumer electronics systems. Consumer electronics could be any portable systems, portable electronics that you use in everyday life starting from camcorder, camera, smartphone, smartwatch and so on. There are many types of consumer electronics. They all somewhere or the other rely on MIPS processor for its internal functioning. So it's good if you have some basic thorough knowledge on this course, it will be quite good for you to design these systems in the future. It also is useful in designing optimized systems used in medical applications. So there are several medical applications that require the knowledge of computer architecture. So when we get into that designing part of the course, you will see that those knowledge will be used later if you want to design medical uh, application based processors for several uh, you know, state of the art applications such as CT scan, MRI, so on and so forth. The knowledge of the course is also useful in performing hardware software partitioning. Now this is a new word I am quite sure for you but hardware software partitioning basically means what type of application goes into hardware and what type of application goes into software we could devise a partitioning algorithm to decide that feature so knowledge of this course will also help you understand that okay if this is my task am i going to put it up in hardware or am i going to put it through in a software so on um, the the world is heading towards designing ai and ml based processors and there are several state of the art processors that are being uh, innovated and developed in research laboratories and in uh, several uh, industries so this course will also give you the basic fundamental framework for designing ai and ml based hardware that you could use in your uh, future future career and uh, the knowledge of the computer architecture is also useful in designing processors for gaming systems and several audio video applications. Okay, now let us look into the basic feature of a computer processor. So when I'm talking about the word architecture, I'm actually referring to the hardware architecture of it, not the software architecture. Okay. So at the from the architectural standpoint, you will see basically it's a uh, central processing unit that comprises of several blocks such as registers, arithmetic logic unit, control unit and many other and they keep interacting with the memory modules such as RAMs. RAMs is uh, random access memory which is one of the very critical memory blocks in a computer system and they have a they have a common bus uh, which could act as an interface for the systems which I talked about and the IO devices, the input output devices which could uh, act as an interface with the processor and the memory module. So these IO devices are basically nothing but external devices like your printers, your USB pen drives and so on and so forth. Okay, now comes a very important slide. And this is pretty much a very, very important information that you will that you'll come across. 
not many courses actually talk about the different classifications of a computer architecture so computer architecture can be of several categories I put up here the most three important classifications of a computer architecture mind it the computer architecture that you are going to learn in this course is about the general purpose computer architecture which is dealing with uh, processors which are basically CPU okay central processing unit so but there are other two types as well for example we have custom application specific processors too okay as the name implies it's a custom processor an application specific processor meant to cater to a particular class of applications that could be from multimedia could be from medical applications could be from AI could be from ML so on so forth okay and then we have a third category of computer architectures which is known as reconfigurable computer architectures this reconfigurable computer architectures are basically nothing but architectural platforms that help you to reconfigure the internal structure of it based on the demands of the application okay that means it's basically time sharing of the resources that are present inside the computer hardware so the general purpose processors some examples could be MIPS which will thoroughly focus in this particular course that is the main goal and essence of this course there's one more which is known as HCS12 it's a microcontroller from a Freescale Semiconductor uh, talking from the perspective of customer application specific processors the different categories could be ASICs which are known as application specific integrated circuits or digital signal processors in short DSP they could all act as custom or application specific processors some examples could be filter these filters are uh, or more precisely to be called as digital filters are widely used in many signal processing functions for uh, noise attenuation for uh, spectral power spectral analysis for several types of uh, audio video applications such as to 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 cut off a certain part of the frequency to allow a certain part of the frequency so on and so forth they are very very vital components of all major electronic products then we could also have JPEG JPEG is uh, uh, a standard uh, of for imaging compression or video compression by IEEE so JPEG is also a custom processor that is responsible for compressing the image pixels or video pixels to a certain particular format based on certain compression algorithms or multi-layered compression algorithms and then we could also have AI and ML based applications that are used for projections uh, you know classifications of data prediction uh, of data and so on and so forth from the reconfigurable architectural point of view we would have FPGA and CPLD FPGA I've, I'm quite sure I've spoken about this uh, quite a bit and you may have heard about this FPGA is called field programmable gate array and CPLD stands for complex programmable logic devices so these are all uh, uh, reconfigurable platforms that could be used to reconfigure the internal structure based on lookup tables based on the uh, muxes based on fuse links so on and so forth some examples from uh, different vendors such as Xilinx and Intel could be Spartan cool runner vertex so on and so forth okay so please keep in mind that computer architecture can be of three major types general purpose custom or application specific and finally reconfigurable okay so this is pretty much what I've already spoken about but just to give you more idea about the features of different types of processors so general purpose processors are used for wide variety of applications by the user it has general purpose architecture however it is not optimized for high performance and low power because it is catering to a wide class of applications so it's not really possible to customize it for one particular class and optimize it for that some examples could be MIPS microprocessor HCS12 from Freescale Intel Pentium series so on and so forth custom processors as I said they cater to a particular class of applications it has dedicated usage for performing data intensive and power hungry calculations that means whenever you have a data crunching application and you want to 
you want to occupy your processor think twice because in that case your processor will get totally occupied for performing only that particular application and all the remaining other types of applications such as browsing uh, incoming video call handling audio calls so on and so forth may not be possible in an optimized fashion so whenever we have a data crunching or data intensive applications or a power hungry applications it is always advisable to build a custom processor or applications specific processor for that okay and that is why it is optimized to deliver high performance and low power okay some examples as i said could be filter asics jpeg compression decompression uh, ips ip stands for intellectual property cores so these all play a part in the custom processors reconfigurable processors as i said mostly of two types programmable array logic programmable logic array and they can accommodate emulate different digital applications on the hardware by performing fuse links by programming fuse links by programming the internal lookup tables by programming the internal muxes okay and collectively these things are all known as configurable logic blocks so they those can be configured to fit in different types of applications as and when needed on demand examples could be from different vendors such as spartan vertex cool runner so on and so forth and they have certainly better performance than the general purpose counterpart now let me give you a comparative analysis between microprocessor and microcontroller see microprocessors are similar to microcontrollers but they are not same okay so let me give you a point by point classification and the differences so microprocessor consists of only cpu while microcontroller contains cpu memory io all integrated on a single chip that is everything is on a single fabricated platform okay microprocessor is used in desktop machines and personal systems whereas microcontrollers are used in embedded systems embedded applications which are mostly used in portable electronic gadgets microprocessors could be one human based architecture while microcontroller would be or could be hardware based based architecture we'll talk about these two architectures in details in the subsequent lectures but as of now just keep in mind that these two types of architectures are slightly different from each other and these two different types of uh, hardware computer architectures employ different architectures okay one is one human based and the other is hardware based some examples of microprocessor could be intel pentium processors amd processors so on examples of microcontrollers could be freescale semiconductor hcs12 and many others the microprocessor has two types one is risk based and the second is sisc based risc is uh, reduced instruction set computer which is a computer with a small highly optimized set of instruction sets while sisc is complex instruction set computer that is more uh, oriented towards specialized set of instructions okay however on the contrary microcontrollers have low power feature that exists and that's why it finds application in embedded systems some examples could be used in washing machines mp3 players and embedded systems okay now let's move on to another aspect of computer architecture so from the software abstraction flow perspective uh, we'll start with the high level programming language such as c we'll have the we'll have a c code we'll convert that to an assembly language for mips processor the the assembly language could be in the form that i've shown on the right side with certain assembly uh, language instructions and that uses certain registers certain offsets and so on could also access memory locations it will be then converted to its respective machine language for mips processor which we often call as machine code which then gets executed by the mips processor which is at the structural or hardware level and finally we produce the output of this okay so that's pretty much the high level abstraction flow now let me also bring the angle of compilers in and assemblers into this 
So compilers basically are responsible for translating high level programming language code to its respective machine level code or machine code. Whereas the assembler converts the assembly language program or assembly language to its machine language code. Okay, and both can actually be integrated in a single flow. So you start with the high level language. It passes through several analyzers, which you will of course learn in computer, uh, compiler technique courses in the future, such as lexical analyzer, syntax analyzer, semantic analyzer, intermediate code generator, code optimizer, and target code generation. And you produce the assembly code. Now, here both the functions of assembler and compiler are being done together within a single flow okay so that is also uh, an important thing to uh, understand and realize that this assembly code is then fed into the MIPS processor okay uh, in the form of machine code that can be interpreted and processed further to produce the output Okay, so today we had a generic discussion about computer architecture. We focused on several things such as knowing what computer architecture is, knowing what the different classifications of computer architecture is. We also had seen a difference between uh, microprocessor and microcontroller. You also had an idea about the software abstraction flow. You have also seen how compilers and assemblers could get into the flow of uh, uh, computer architecture. And that is the reason why he said that this course could be a useful build upon for the subsequent courses of your curriculum such as compilers and operating systems. But uh, I hope it's a, a very uh, useful session that we had today and in the next lecture we'll focus more about the other types of processors and how we could uh, focus more on performance analysis of MIPS processor. Thank you so much.